Dear learners, I welcome you all to this presentation. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about steam generator and turbine. In this steam generator, when is the process, classifications, simple question of our simple vertical boiler, Lamont boiler and Babcock and Wilcox boiler. And if you are considering the turbine, the turbine classifications, especially impulsion and reactions. Let me see one by one. Here, this is the steam generator. The steam generator is also called as boiler, which generate the steam above atmospheric pressure. So, this is called boiler. A boiler is a closed vessel which generate steam by transferring heat produced by burning of fuel to water. The steam is used for the following purpose. One is power generation that is a mechanical work and then processing like a textile industry then heating. If you are considering the power generation, the steam is used to drive prime movers like a steam engine or a steam turbine which in turbine device an electric generator to produce electricity. The power obtained from the steam turbine and steam engine can also be used to perform the mechanical work. The second thing is processing. Steam is used for industrial processing such as sizing, bleaching, etc. in textile industries, chemical, sugar plant and other industries also. If you are considering third one, this is the heating, here you have a heating, steam is used for heating residential or industrial buildings in winter. It is also used to heat water for water supply. Then we have some classifications that is according to the axis of the cell. Here according to the axis of the cell, we may classify it horizontal, vertical as well as inclined. For example, the vertical boilers occupies less space. Here the simple vertical boiler is the best example for according to the axis of this cell. Second thing, according to the flow of water on the hot gases flow of water on the hot gases that is fire tube boiler and water tube boiler. In the fire tube boiler, the hot gases flow inside the tube and the water surrounds the tube. Example, coherence boiler, Lancashire boiler and locomotive boiler. Then in this water tube boiler, if it is water tube boiler, the water is inside the tube and hot gases surrounded the tubes example Babcock and Wilcox boiler and Lemont boiler and Wallach's boiler. Then third one is according to the position of the furnace. According to the position of the furnace, it may be externally fired and internally fired. The boiler is known as externally fired if the furnace or fire box is shooted outside the cell. Example, Babcock and Wilcox boiler. In case the internally fired boiler, the furnace is located inside the boiler cell. Example, coherence boiler or Lancashire boiler. And fourth one is according to the circulation of water. It may be forced circulation or natural circulation. If it is forced circulation, the type of boiler, the water is circulated by the forced pump. Example, Wallach's boiler, Lamont and Benson boiler. The natural circulation type of boiler, the circulation of water in the boiler takes place due to the natural convection current produced by the application of heat. Example, Lancashire boiler, locomotive boiler, Babcock and Wilcox boiler. And fifth one is according to the pressure of steam developed. It may be high pressure or it may be a low pressure boiler. The boiler which produce steam at pressure of 80 bar and above call it as high pressure boiler. Example Babcock, Wilcox, Lemont, etc. The boiler which produce steam that is pressure below 80 bar is called low pressure boiler. Example locomotive boiler, coherent boiler, Lancashire boiler also. The next classification is, it depends on according to the mobility. 
the stationary or portable boiler. So, here the boiler are classified either the stationary or mobile, it may be in a marine applications and all. The stationary boilers are used in the power plant to produce a steam for power generation. Then the mobile boiler or portable boiler are fitted on vehicles that can move from one place to other place. Example, locomotive boiler in marine applications also. So, here if you are considering the bar 1 bar pressure that is 10 power 5 Newton per meter squared, the 1 Newton per meter squared equal to 1 Pascal. So, here you have some classifications about the turbines also. So, here turbine may be classified in mainly in a two things, one is impulse turbine, another one is reaction turbine. This reaction turbine also call it as impulse reaction turbine or person's turbine. This impulse turbine also classified into four types, one is simple impulse turbine, the second one is velocity, velocity compound impulse turbine, third one is pressure compound impulse turbine, then last one is pressure velocity compounded impulse turbine. Here this is normal impulse turbine, this is reaction turbine. When the nozzle takes place here, the pressure is dropped inside in this area and then the velocity of the flow of fluid, it may be in a gaseous state or liquid state that is the water or steam, the may be increased, the velocity of the jet is increased, it will hit the turbine blade. So, here the turbine blades are heated by this flow of this steam, so that the turbine get rotate in this way. So, this is called impulse turbine. Suppose if it is reaction turbine, it is look like a drum type, we may send uh, the liquid or a gas steam to this way, so that the flow of fluid may be covered this area and then it will trying to come out from this area to this pathway as well as this side. So, if it is come this way, so water jet will go this side, so that the reactions, opposite reaction takes place, so it will move in this direction. So, here also the water comes out in this way, so that the reaction scheme this side. So, the reaction takes place, so this is impulse turbine, this is reaction turbine, according to this action we may call it as this is a reaction turbine. Dear learners, this is simple vertical boiler structures are showing to you. So, here we can see some mountings are there, but there is no any accessories specifically we could not mention here. But we can we can start with the bottom side. This is a aspid. This is a grate here. The vertical path of or a flue gas tube or this is the flue gases are passing inside that. Then here we may call it as a chimney. Then this side this is a steam stop valve. This is manhole. This is a steam. This water. Then here the water is stored in this area. So here you have a blow off cock. This is a central flow tube. Here you have a cell. Then feasible plug, but water level indicator, pressure cage, steam safety valve, these are the parts of simple vertical boiler. In general, generally the boiler which is used to produce a steam, this is called steam generator. How the steam is produced means due to conduction takes place between this water as well as the cell. The cell is a medium between this flue gas as well as the water, the heat is passing or heat is supplied to the water through this cell. It means that the conduction takes place between these two things. While we are supplying the material like a coal to this furnace, if you are going to fire those things, if you are going to burn, burn those things, so the heat will produce, that heat is passing through this pipeline. The pipeline is kept as in a vertical manner, so that this is called a vertical boiler, but there is no any extra accessories or extra uh, things are attached with this, so that this is a simple vertical boiler. But the safety precautions, the safety is very must because this is our uh, mountings. The mounting is very important, without mounting we should not run the boiler. Suppose if you are not having an accessories, there is no any problem. The accessories which is only used to improve the efficiency of the boiler, then if you, it is used to increasing the steam pressure, a temperature, you can utilize the temperature properly. But the accessories, it is a 
normal thing but mountings are little different because without mountings we should not run the boiler suppose instead of uh, this condition if you are running the boiler what will happen the accident will takes place because here you know this is a water level indicator this is only purpose to indicate the level of water suppose if you are not having this kind of facilities in this setup you could not find the level of water inside that sometimes the water level may get reduced that time you may suffer a lot then second thing here you have a pressure cage this pressure cage which is used to indicate the pressure level inside the boiler suppose if you are not having this pressure cage what will happen the accident will occur because without pressure gauge how could you find the pressure what what kind what level of pressures are what amount of pressures are happening inside the boiler who will say to us no so this pressure gauge should indicate it is a helpful to us to find the pressure level of steam inside the boiler here you have a steam safety valve then here you have a steam stop valve you have a two different things are there both are valve but it is called a steam safety valve this is steam stop valve the steam stop valve once the pressure is attained inside the boiler we should send that steam for useful work or it may send to the turbine it may be an impulse turbine or reaction turbine but here the steam stop valve which is used to flow it is a flow control valve we may say it is a flow control valve the flow of steam will be controlled by this steam stop valve but here steam safety valve means certain period on so in, in this scenario you may consider uh, I am going to say one scenario if the steam stop valves are not working in a proper way sometimes it may struct what will happen the enormous pressure will generate at certain level it is reached if it is in a critical conditions the, the accident will take place the blasting will take place because of the enormous pressures produced inside the cylinder or the wall or that is a boiler so that we should release properly of uh, we should release that steam properly in a certain pressure if not happening then the accident will take place at the critical situation the steam safety valve will release automatically so that the pressure will reduced then we can be in a safer side we can kept all the things we can keep the, all the things in a safer side so this steam safety valve stop valve pressure cage water level indicator these are all the mountings which is very very useful and then it is necessary to run the boiler here you have a manhole for inspection purpose this is about simple vertical boiler dear learners this is babcock and wilcox boiler so in these arrangements we may call it as this is water tube boiler why we call it as water tube boiler means the water is passing through this pipeline so that we may call it as water tube boiler fire tube boiler means if the boiler containing the tubes if the fire is passing through the tubes we may call it as fire tube boiler last pictures we saw that in the simple vertical boiler the flue gas is passing through this pipeline so that we may say that is fire tube boiler but in this babcock and wilcox boiler the scenario is little different because the water is passing through this way so that this is called water tube boiler then some other equipments are kept like this as it is in a simple vertical boiler like a pressure cage water level indicator we have a fusible plug and then steam safety valve steam soft stop valve so the manhole and all then blow of cock the everything is similar but the arrangements are little different suppose if you are going to add the coal here so if you are going to make a fire on this furnace the fire will flow through this way so that the tubes get heated so it will transfer the temperature to the water the water is flow inside flow of water happening inside so that the when the water is get heated the hot molecules will move in upward directions so that without any external force the hot water will flow in, the, in this way so that the natural force the natural circulation takes place in this water tube boiler the water get heated the hot water will go there then it will come back again again and again it will uh, the things are happening so that it will convert that water into wet steam if the wet steam 
get heated dry steam then if we are going to keep on supplying the water temperature or the heat to the dry steam it will convert it into superheated steam here you can see this is the c type of arrangements are there this is superheated region once the water is converted into wet steam it will occupy this area you can see this is the empty area so the steams are occupied in this area the water is in a below of this steam so the steam there is only way to enter in this direction so the steam will enter into this direction according to the pressure the steam will enter in this way so here the steam enter in this c type clamp here you are already supplying the heat continuously so that the superheated again will absorb the heat from the flue gases and then it will supply to this this tube will supply to the heat to the wet steam or dry steam that dry steam can absorb the heat then it will convert it into superheated steam that superheated steams again we can send to the required works so these are the working of backcock and wilcox boiler and then i forgot to say one thing this is a feasible plug here as well as below of cock here the feasible plug it is also occupied this is also available in the simple vertical boiler also for what purpose we are using the plus feasible plug means suppose if the water level is too much of heat so that if the heat is too very high then if you want to stop then the fusible plug get melted in the temperature and then what will happen the flow of this water will pour into this fire pit area the great area so that the temperature of this furnace can get off or may be reduced so that we can control the flow or we can control the temperature in the water level then here a below of cock it is in a bottom most portion of this setups because the water may get contaminated with some other uh, dust particles the all the other dust particles are sedimented in this in the bottom of this portions only if you want to clean it it's very easy to clean while we are having the below of cock in a bottom side of this setups so here you have a inspection door this inspection door it's similar to previous one so you should to inspect inspect the inside of the boilers these are the working of backcock and wilcox boiler dear learners now we are going to see about lemont boiler the lemont boiler which is used to produce the pressure of the steam it is more than 80 bar so here the arrangements are little different we have some layouts or line sketches are available we can start with one end for example what are the spots are available here means we can see one by one here you have aspit great fire which is similar to previous one and all then you have a flow of uh, fuel to grate then here combustion chamber this is the combustion chamber and then you have a cell these are the cells are covered then you have you have a evaporator you have a distributing uh, distributing headed with a orifice you have a circulating pump down chamber and this is the uh, steam generator or a boiler area and then this is a convection of superheated this is a superheated steam turbine we can attain then here you can uh, economizer you have feed pump feed water air preheater blower cold air in this is the exhaust gas to the chimney so th this is a hot air to combustion chamber these are the parts are available in the lemont boiler first once if you want to start the what boiler you should pour the water inside the if you want to run the boiler or if you want to start to fire the furnace the boiler should keep containing the water so once already you pour the water then you should keep on pouring the water because of according to the level of water reducing you want to refill it okay then if you are going to fire the furnace or coal inside the furnace if you are going to fire the coal so you need some gas or atmospheric air to burn properly so we can collect the air from the atmosphere air where it is coming from you can see this the directions this is the directions it's a air preheater before that you have a blower then it, the blower will collect the heat collect the air in from the atmosphere sometimes the atmospheric air may get in a cold conditions in a winter seasons the summer season the scenario is different suppose if it is a tropical or subtropical region whatever it is if the conditions the what the air should be in a preheated conditions 
it should be preheated conditions then only it will increasing the firing capacity of the coal but the outside of the atmospheric air may be colder conditions then we should utilize the wasted heat through the flue gases properly then how we can utilize means we can send the air atmospheric air to the furnace through the air preheater so while the atmospheric air cold air is passing through the air preheater with the help of blow air to the furnace the air preheater region in this region the temperature is absorbed by the cold air from the flue gases so the flue gases already it's in a wasted one we are going to we are sending it to the atmosphere only but before going to send to the atmosphere we can try to utilize that heat for our useful purpose so that the air preheater which is used to preheat the atmospheric air for improving the firing by firing cap capacity of the furnace and second thing feed water circuits suppose if you are considering the feed water here you have a pump the feed water pump which is used to pump the water from the sump to the drum steam separator drum so here we have an economizer why we call it as economizer means suppose if you are going to pour the water in the drum so here if it is in a cold water or it is may it may be a normal water if you are going to send through this evaporator conditions and all so it will absorb the heat from this furnace area so if it is a cold or a warm water it will take time to convert that water level or liquid level into vapor state or gaseous state so that if the water is sending through the economizer the economizer which is used to absorb the heat of the flue gases and it will improve the temperature of the feed water once the water is in a warm conditions then the temperature of that water may converted into steam easily so that we are trying to utilize this flue gases heat in this area for the feed water supply so that this is called economizer this air preheater the economizer this is one of the accessories for this boiler so which is used to increasing the efficiency of the boiler or utilizing the furnace firing capacity properly and the steam how it is produced means here you have a steam separator drum here you have a water the water is passing through the evaporator to the drum again how it is happening means with the help of circulating pump this not it's not look like a babcock and wilcox boiler because there the natural circulation takes place but here this is the uh, heavy type of boiler it will produce more than 80 bar pressure so that the circulating pump which is used to circulate the water by the way of forces applied so this is called forced circulation water level is happening here so here you have a water will passing through this evaporator here the water may converted into vapor so that vapor will passing uh, through this pipeline and it will store in this area here you have this is the vapor conditions then this is the liquid state this is the water this is the steam that steam again passing through this pipeline here this is called convection superheated region so that that wet steam again and again heated then once the we are keep on supplying the temperature or keep on supplying the heat to the dry wet steam it will convert it into dry steam once the dry steam converted into superheated steam so the enormous pressures attained by this way then it will send to the required work it means that the high pressurized superheated steam will send to the superheated turbine steam to turbine so that the turbine blade uh, heated by this superheated steam then it will converted um, that the energy into mechanical energy then it will connected with the uh, generator then it will produce electrical energy these are the sequence of some operations so here this is the working principle of lemon boiler so the main important is air preheater economizer these are all the accessories superheater these are all the accessories this very important one to increasing the efficiency of the boiler at the same time we should not forget about the mountings without mountings we should not run the boiler it is only the way to run the boiler safely so that we are advised the operator should taking care of the mountings very important one so these are the working principle of on the uh, parts of le mount boiler dear learners now i would like to conclude this session in this session we were discussed 
about steam generator it means a boiler and its process functions classifications like a simple vertical boiler babcock and wilcox boiler it's for uh, natural circulations as well as water tube boiler fire tube boiler and then a heavy pressure boiler like a lemon boiler and all then if you are considering the turbine the turbine classifications and then basic principles like a impulse turbine and reaction turbines i hope you are all enjoying the lecture in this video thank you